Hello folks, J.D. Wessel back here with another edition of the Wildcat Breakdown, talking about all things basketball here during this finishing of basketball season. Well, I'm joined with Andrew Pfeiffer, Jaden Cover, and Craig Sullivan, our special guest here, back at it again. So boys, like I said, the finishing of basketball, but really tonight playing Creighton Prep, we hope it would go our way. But given how the last two games have gone for us against Creighton Prep, you know, there's a good chance the season could be ending tonight. What are your guys' first thoughts on the game? Um, I'd say the Wildcats have no pressure going into this. I mean, you're facing Prep, who might be the best team in the state. And, and uh, you know, on the Prep side, you look at it, they, they could lose this game and realistically make it to state. I mean, oh, they I would. I Being the one seed, you automatically. Okay, bit. so. Yeah. They're they're already in state, so there's no pressure for them if they come out flat. Which it could either work one of two ways: either Cream Prep comes out lazy, or they come out playing loose and play really well. I know they're going to still be motivated to win because a district championship means something in basketball, and uh, they obviously. I know you had said before that their coach told their players, "We don't want these guys tearing down our nets tonight." Mm. Yeah, I would agree, and. Jaden, the only thing I'd say is uh, Creighton sports are hot right now. You yeah. know, Blue Jays just beat number three Villanova. And, as, you much know. As, as much as we hate to yeah. say it. Like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Prep just won the state title in swimming this weekend. Yeah. So it's so they're keeping it going. I, I think I saw something that said they had over 270 state championships overall, which, I mean, being Creighton Prep, you should be dominant, being able to – in a way, recruit your athletes. Well, yeah, that is definitely true. I mean, being an all-boys school, you definitely have an advantage in men's sports. To be able to get some better talent overall, just having double the numbers that other schools would have. I'd also say for the game tonight, Millard West didn't prove in their second matchup, only losing by 11 after losing by 16 in the first one. So if they can continue that trend, it could probably be positive. And they were ahead by one point during the game anyway. It was like midway through the third. So it's not like, you know, they're – Cream Prep's unbeatable for Miller West. No, you know, right now, they're only one loss. And, you know, aside from that, I think they are unbeatable, in my opinion. I think Creighton Prep is probably going to be the team this year. Well, um, they're, they're, tonight we might see a little bit of a different story because the huge factor comes into play tonight, especially with the injury of a rock who's been... Uh, and it's not, not final, but, like, it is just... It's not final, but there's rumors speculating that he went down with a concussion, so he could be sitting on the bench for tonight's game, and that could be huge for Creighton Prep, you know, losing a player like him who's pretty much been their top scorer this entire year. He's been just pretty much playing like an all-star. Just You never see talent like him from a high school level. You know he's something special, and losing him could, you know, definitely change the outcome of how that game could go yeah for sure and it, you know as much as I want Millard West to win I really think Creighton Prep is the most well-rounded team in the state along with a lot of other states they would definitely probably be the better team if not the best uh, and I think for Creighton Prep it really just comes from the coaching from coach Lukey I mean him and his son obviously they got that Doug McDermott Greg McDermott type bond you know player coach combo I mean they just every time you watch them play it just you can just see the wheels turning for coach Ludicky and you know that whole Creighton prep team they just he's definitely the best coach in the state I'd say and he definitely has a good legacy built already and I think he has a lot more to give for Creighton prep and I think again this year this Creighton prep team is looking better than ever I agree with that especially uh, with the coaching when you're when you're a coach of an all-boys school, you have to learn how to take the pieces you're given and turn it into something great, and I think that's something Creighton Prep has done time and time again, and something with, that we've seen from all Creighton Prep coaches, taking those athletes and be able to put them in the right places. For sure, and now to talk about Millard West, I know we've talked a lot about Creighton Prep. What are your guys' thoughts on who might be the key player for this game tonight? I mean, we've seen a lot of production from Brock in these most recent games, and also Gio, pretty much the leader of the team, went on the court. You know, obviously the stats don't always show that Gio is the best player. I think Brock kind of holds that right now with, you know, at least points-wise, rebounds-wise. But who do you guys see having a big game tonight? Um, 
I think it's going to be Brock. I think especially if uh, Rope's injured for prep, I mean, that opens up a lot of space. Now Brock doesn't necessarily have to focus all his energy defensively because when you're matched up with Rope, you better be, or a Rob, uh, you better be dialed in defensively. I think if he is injured, that allows Brock less stress on the defensive side and it could really open up for his game in the post. For sure. Yeah, I would say you probably need everyone to play well to win this game. So I think even if Brock or Gio had a good game, you probably need a great team effort because I don't think one player or two players single-handedly are going to be able to win this for the Wildcats. It's going to need to be a great team effort. You're going to need a lot of scoring off the bench from off, off the bench from your team to even have a really good chance to win this. I think uh, everyone should keep their eyes on Austin Harris. He's definitely going to be coming up with some clutch shots from uh, the three-point line. I think he's definitely going to be a player to watch, especially in tough situations that he can help get you out of. Yeah, for sure. And I don't know if any of you guys saw highlights or went to the Burt game, but you know, me going to the Burt game, I I saw Austin Harris go for a quiet 12, and that's what he's usually there for is the quiet point production. And he's definitely been struggling in these last couple games. He kind of picked it up against Burt. Again, a quiet 12 points. And the last time they played Creighton Prep, he, he definitely had a good game. I think he just struggles with the matchups that he's kind of set with. Creighton Prep is a team that spreads the court, not only on the offense, but the defensive side of the ball. And they really make those one-on-one -on -one matchups hurt you. Not only, again, on the offensive side, but the defensive side of the ball. They play a great man defense. And I think for Austin, he's got to be using the speed tonight. And Creighton Prep is a team that won't allow you to shoot the three-point ball that well. You know, they're always guarding out on the front because, you know, in the inside they have a rope down there who can – Pretty much defend anything. You know, is it a prop or a rope? I don't. I'm. <laughs> I, I was. I, I'm taking a stab at it. Tomato, tomato, know. tomato, tomato. Definitely all right. right. Yeah. Because we've heard a prop and we've heard yeah. a rope multiple times. I just wanted to clear that up. But yeah, like I said, the Wildcats really. I think again, the key is going to have to be fast production on offense and the lockdown defense that they usually have. You know, against prep, they usually give up a a very well amount of points, but if the defense can click tonight and if a rope can, you know, yeah. not, you know, not saying, but even if I he's mean, just not at a hundred percent, that also yeah. affects the outcome of the game. Again, yeah, a lot on the line tonight, district championship game, and you know, I'm not too sure on the brackets if anyone could maybe pull them up for districts. I yeah, know, I think I got but it. a game I want to hit on is Millard South versus Pius. This will be a rematch from last year. Millard South came out the winners at Pius. This year it'll be at Millard South. And for the Patriots, they have definitely been, you know, kind of a mid-level team this year when it comes to terms of top 10. And, you know, Millard South, they have a lot of shooters, a lot of scorers, and one person I want to hit on is the Nebraska baseball commit, Kyle Perry. What are your guys' thoughts on him? And more importantly, his team leadership. You see him on the court with just great body emotion, and he definitely leads this Patriots basketball team. But we're also going to be seeing that come this summer. He's a, he's a tough player. He's a big kid. Uh, he drives pretty well. Uh, he's a high scorer. He, I think he leads their offense in uh, points per game besides Tyrell Carroll, who – uh, unfortunately, has been absent this past few games. I think he's coming back now recently. But uh, with the absence of Carroll, I think Perry's really stepped up and uh, is the leadership that Millard South needs, especially. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think I love Kyle Perry's attitude as far as high school sports. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's had his future made as a Nebraska baseball player for a couple of years now. He could just shut it down, said either I'm going to coast through basketball season, not drive to the hoop, stay in the perimeter, just kind mm -hmm. of have a quiet season, just protect himself, or he could have just quit and not played basketball. Yeah. I mean, he, he has it made out for him to where he doesn't need to play basketball this season, but credit to him for not only going out there and playing, but he's a big reason why his team's sitting where they are now, and I think if Millard South does make a run in state, it's not done without the production of Kyle Perry. Tough competitor. Pretty tough kid. Um, I think definitely for Nebraska baseball, he's a big player to get. I mean, he threw a no-hitter against Millard North in the state tournament first round last year. That's someone Nebraska definitely used. I know they had a lot of trouble this past 
weekend with Oregon State. They lost two games there. So Oregon State's one of the top teams in the country. They'll probably be another CWS favorite. But Nebraska right now is just not competing with those top teams. It seems like every year, or these past two years, they've gotten to a regional and they are not able to win it. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, hitting on Millard South, again, they are kind of a, you know, you put them in the top five for the top five best teams. I think you'd go prep, Lincoln High, maybe Millard South, some could argue Central in there. Yeah, and, you know, actually Central is technically the number one team there in the first district. But, I mean, you know, Creighton Prep and Central, they – they yeah, go hand in it's, hand. It's a lot like football season was, where there's a a very definitive top four, five teams, mm-hmm. and those are the peop- those are the teams. I mean, luckily, you know, basketball is more of a luck game than I'd say football is as far as bounces. So there can be some upsets more often, but those are the teams that, you know, come a couple weeks from now are going to be hoisting the trophy. Yes, for sure, and. You know, if you guys had to give a favorite on who you think might be coming out, I mean, not only into state, but a potential state champion. Again, we have Creighton Prep, Lincoln High, Omaha Central, Omaha Bryan, Millard South, uh, West Side. you could even toss in the mix. I mean, do you guys have any thoughts on who, I mean, if you've seen anything, who you might have winning? You know, going into the going into the postseason, I was actually really excited to look at Burke and see how they would do. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, that didn't work out from there. And uh, but I guess I'm once a once a Roth is healthy, I'm gonna have to give it to Creighton Prep for my prediction. I think uh, they've got the talent, they've got the coaching, and I think they've got the skills necessary to get past the postseason and definitely see a state championship. Well, for sure. And you know, for Burke, it was just very unfortunate that they they missed out on a first seed. I mean, yeah, for sure. They were <clears throat> they were definitely a top contender in the state, as you know, most would think. But then they were placed into Millard West and Creighton Prep's district. I mean, you know, them and Millard West kind of went hand in hand. I mean, first game they played, Chris Hickman and Burke, they, they walked out of the jungle with a very close victory. And, you know, for Millard West, they definitely knew that they could give them a fight. And then, obviously, Millard West took care of business at Burke. And, I mean, it all came from Devin Thomas. Well, you know, given the placement, uh, Devin Thomas, you know, he was here at Millard West, transferred over to Burke, and they illegally played him, which, from what I heard, he only played around two minutes a game for Burke. But he played about five games. Yeah. But it still counts. He played about five games, two minutes each. So all those games were disqualified. Know, yeah, so the two they won. Placing Burke down to, like, a team that's just barely over 500, putting us pretty much in the driver's seat because, I mean, they went from one of the top seeds to, never mind, you guys are in Creighton Prep's bracket. Good luck. So, you know. And you almost wonder <laughs> if the NSAA kind of looks at that. I mean, I know it's based off a point system, mm-hmm. but if there is some, like, hand, you know, maneuvering of teams, if it's yeah. kind of like, okay, if you want to cheat, have fun. Let's you know, put you in prep. You don't really see that often, on a, especially on a high school level. And, and I don't even know if it was intentional. That's the yeah, thing. yeah. I, mean, I, it, I highly doubt it was intentional. I mean, you just have to be extra cautious yeah. like this. And like we're seeing it in the college basketball mm-hmm. landscape as well recently with Arizona and with Michigan State and some of these other top mm-hmm. programs. Yeah. I mean, even the Louisville. thought, yeah, even like Louisville, even the thought of being impartial or giving out extra benefits yeah. through agents or anything else is going to be looked at in scrutiny. I think that's enough. Yeah, yeah. And, like with Arizona, that's pretty odd. Obvious. Yeah. I mean, that the player they paid all that money. I mean, he was he's making a difference. Yeah, Alleg- allegedly, was not making a difference. Mm. Yeah, and I think <laughs> going back on what you said, JD, at a high school level, it there's no way it can be intentional. Yeah. I mean, they're just and kids. They want to kind of get them out yeah. and play. I think the NSAA kind of. And I mean, let's be honest. Answer. You wouldn't recruit a player just to play him two minutes a game. If you're no, recruiting a player, absolutely. you're. You're playing him full games. I mean, let's be honest. Burke, he's going to be a starter if you're really trying to pull that off. Burke was trying to get him minutes, and they were trying to, you know, let the new kid get some yeah. reps if he was potentially going to be a part of their basketball program. But uh, he just got to learn the hard way. I mean, season's over, too. I mean, karma's got to be hurting Devin Thomas for leaving Millard West to... Which he didn't even play basketball. Uh, <laughs> to eventually find his feet losing to Millard West. Watching Burke lose to Millard West.
But yeah, guys, you got anything else to touch on? I mean, we've we've kind of tried to hit it all. I know we no one's apparently found the brackets for districts or uh we're looking. I mean, okay. I mean <laughs> um, all you really yeah. need to know. Creighton Prep coming in dominant. Lincoln High, they're they're gonna put up a fight too. And you know those teams will find their way Miller in. South. <clears throat> you know, the only possible. thing about that Miller South Pius game is, you know, last year they played them close and Miller South won. I think they actually went into overtime, and so obviously Pius looking for some redemption. And I'm really interested to see how that one will go tonight. So, so when you're sorry, Jaden, but um, when you're, I just have a question. When you're Millard West and you're heading into the district championship tonight, and let's say you, let's say they win it tonight. What do you think they have to look forward to I was in actually, the state tournament? I was going to touch on that. So Millard West, you know, we've covered their games this year. I think I've covered a game with all of you guys yeah. before. They they have the talent to play with everyone in the state. We've seen them yeah. hang for a good three and a half quarters with Creighton Prep. Um, there, there's something about them, especially when they get in the home, the home court, mm-hmm. which they don't have the luxury anymore, but... You know, we saw them go tooth and nail with Millard South. They have a – they're a great team with a lot of potential. Yeah. The problem is they have not put a string of wins together all year. Mm-hmm. It's been win one, lose one, win one, lose one, lose two, win two. It's just they haven't had the consistency. They could upset Green Prep tonight. I would not be that shocked. I mean, it would be a tough win, but I wouldn't be shocked. But I don't – yeah, like you said, wouldn't be shocked. I think a lot of people at Millard West today are thinking upset bit all the way. Mm-hmm. And I mean, so yeah, like you said, if it, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I, and with you're right. I think that people at our school believe that they they can do it. The only issue is, I find it very difficult that Millard West can have four upset games in a row, being the mm-hmm. district championship, then three in the state tournament. There's not a dominant team this year like there was Omaha South a few years ago where there's no chance Millard West could, you know, pull something off like this or any team. But it's just going to be really tough because they haven't shown consistency all year. Yeah, for sure. And, again, with Millard West, I think saying they win tonight, you come to state, you got to take it one game at a time. And, you know, from what I've heard from all those seniors, they want to be out there. They They want to be playing for a chance at a state title. So I think tonight – Obviously, one of the biggest games in their high school basketball career. And I think if they win this one, that will obviously boost their confidence out the window. And I think for Millard West, they'll go as far as uh, as Coach Morrison and those guys will let themselves go. I mean, it's really all it comes down to. You guys have anything else to say? Greg? No, I would just add on to uh, the girls' basketball team. They played great down the oh, stretch yeah. after starting off like – Pretty bad. They won 10 of their last 11, and obviously recently losing to Millard South pretty bad. I think they probably just ran out of energy there at the end, but it was a great run to salvage the season a little bit and make it a little more special. Yeah, and I think that Millard South game, it just got out of hand way too quick. Um, and watching it, Millard West just was not hitting their shots. Uh, and for Millard South, they just playing a chip on with the chip on their shoulder. I mean, losing – getting runner-up last year in the state tournament. I mean, they're a very good basketball team. and you know, They have three yeah. D1-quality players mm-hmm. on their team. I mean, it's just tough for Millard West to hang with them. They played well earlier in the season mm-hmm. against Millard South and almost stole a game there and then went on their run. So I think they'll have a lot to look forward to next year. They're not going to be missing a lot from the senior talent group that actually played this year. Yeah, yeah for sure. And I th- Yeah, again, that Millard West girls basketball team, they definitely have a good future ahead of them. And they had a great season. They picked it up towards the end, like you said, Craig. Won 10 out of the last 11. Andrew and Jaden, anything else to add on? No, no, I think we're good. Alrighty. This has been J.D. Wessel. Andrew Piper. Jaden Covert. Craig Sullivan. With Wildcat Breakdown. Keep it classy, Wildcats.